Thank you, Martin. That was one of the best Bible readings I have ever heard. Uh, well done. That was fantastic. Um, all right, it's a, a really great joy to be here this morning um, as we kind of wrap up um, your Kids Club week that you have had. Um, I was able to come over on Thursday and get a little glimpse of the morning um, and see what is happening. And uh, it's just a joy and a wonderful kind of moment to be able to show up somewhere and just see kids' ministry happening so well, uh, to see all ages kind of investing um, and caring and giving up time um, to spend time with young people. So um, I just want to kind of second Lauren and Ethan's thanks to say, well done, um, you guys, in making ministry to young people really vital um, in this church. So I want to start there, but if you haven't been here this week, um, this is kind of the fourth kind of section of the talk, so we'll wrap up what, we've been, what you guys have been looking at, um, but we'll also kind of work for us, um, if you have missed that, just to stand alone for ourselves. Um, it's kind of the last piece of the puzzle. Um, and I want to start by asking a question. Uh, I think this is going to work. There we go. All right. I want to start by asking a question. Here are four TV shows from very different generations. Uh, Frasier, uh, The Pebbles and Bam Bam Show, Minions, and Rubble and Crew. I want to ask the question, what holds all of these together? These four shows have something in common. Um, I don't think anyone's going to get it, um, and that's okay. Um, but these four shows, um, they all have something in common, and that is that they are all spin-off shows. They all come from another show. They all come where there is a kind of minor character in one show, and the character development happens so much that they kind of get their own show after the fact. Uh, so if you're wondering, where did these come from? Um, here we go. So Frasier came from Cheers. Pebbles and Bam Bam came from the Flintstones. Minions from Despicable Me. Rumble and Crew from Paw Patrol. Uh, and in each of these cases, um, these characters weren't the main point. They had a minor part to play uh, until something happened and someone somewhere sitting in a room around a conference table said, oh, we can make some money off this little guy. Um, this person who isn't the main character um, moves into being the main person in their own show. And what we're going to see today, uh, what I hope we're going to see is the transformation that will happen for a man named Saul, where he moves from being a bit part player in the story of God to really front and center in what God is going to do in the world. Um, so that's where we're heading, where we see a minor character take a shift, be transformed into a main player in what God is doing in the world. Um, how about I pray, and then we'll jump into Acts 9 together. Uh, Father, we thank you uh, for your word. We thank you and that you give us the Bible to read, to tell us who you are, what you are like. And we pray that as we think about this passage this morning, um, that we would have hearts to hear, uh, minds to understand, and our lives would be changed as we trust and follow Jesus. Amen. All right, this week, um, these are the three big things that kids have heard so far um, and that we're going to wrap up today. So first, God made everything. It was good. And it was really very good. So that was the first thing you looked at. And then you saw sin has ruined relationships. Relationships with God, relationships with the world, relationships with one another. And then on Friday morning, um, you would have looked at and seen that only Jesus can fix our biggest problem. Um, and today, what we want to do is draw these threads together um, to see that the news of Jesus is the greatest, the best, the most important news because there is no one else that gives us hope for eternity other than Jesus. And we'll do that by looking at Acts 9 together. Uh, so a bit of background. In Acts chapter 9, verse 1, uh, we, are in, we are reintroduced to this man named Saul. And if we've been reading through Acts, uh, we would have seen him pop up a couple of times already. Uh, now, if, you know the, if you're familiar with the New Testament, Saul, we also know him as Paul. I'm probably going to call him Paul sometimes. It's the same person. Um, but uh, right now he's Saul, and we know that he is a bad guy at this point um, as we get to the start of chapter 9. Um, he's already had a minor part to play, 
um, preceding this moment. So in chapter 9, uh, when... Oh, I'll get to that in a moment. In chapter 7, sorry, Saul is standing there as the first Christian martyr is killed. As Stephen is killed uh, for saying, Jesus is the promised king. Jesus is the one God has sent into the world. Uh, we read that Saul is standing alongside them. Um, and he isn't just watching what's happening. Uh, he has some authority over what is happening as well. Um, Saul is something of a leader in the early persecution of God's people. Uh, he's something of someone in charge as the first Christians are persecuted in Jerusalem. Um, and then a little bit later, we read, not only was Saul there watching, um, at the start of chapter 8, we read that Saul was approving of what was happening. He was saying, this is a good thing that those who trust Jesus are persecuted. And then in verse 3 of chapter 8, we read, Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house, dragging off men and women and putting them in prison. I see Saul, what we know of him so far is he is going about doing everything he can to make sure the news of Jesus doesn't go out into the world. That's his sole mission. Breaking and entering, violently dragging people off to prison. Um, he is a bad guy. And so as we get to the start of chapter 9, what do we know about Saul? He's an enemy of God's people. He's a persecutor and he's a destroyer. That's what he does. Um, this is the little part that he has played so far. Uh, but as we get to the start of chapter 9, uh, we're going to see an incredible transformation happen. As Saul kind of steps out of the shadows, he's been lurking in the sidelines until now, here we're going to see what happens when someone meets the risen Jesus and what transformation will take place. Uh, so we're going to unpack chapter 9 together. And to do this, I'm going to need some help. So I'm a kid's uh, minister by heart, and that means things are a little fun and a little wild. So strap in because... Um, we're going to do a bit of a drama um, for the next little bit of time to unpack chapter 9. So I need, I think, six volunteers who want to come and help me tell the story um, of Acts chapter 9. Now, I don't know any of you, so I'm trusting on your acting skills. Some of them are talking parts. Some of them you don't have to talk as well. But I need, yes, come up the front. I need six people who want to come and help. And if... I don't get volunteers. I'm going to get Lauren to come and just dob some people. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Let's go. One more. One more. All right, perfect. Come up. All right, what are we going to do? I need my box of treats. Yeah, box of treats. Okay. All right, we're going to um, have a look at chapter nine together because this is where everything really happens um, for Saul and his life that is going to be transformed. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, Micah, do you want to be a... It's a beanie. It's not that scary. No? Okay, Martin, you can... Like beanies. You don't like beanies. Of all the things I could have pulled out of the box, the beanie was the least frightening. Okay, Martin, um, you get to wear a beanie because high priests in Jerusalem, they wear cool things on their head, and all I have is a beanie. So, Martin, go over there on that side. That's where Jerusalem's going to be. You don't get to choose your dress up. Okay, you're in Jerusalem, so hold that above your head for a moment. Okay, um, and... You also need those. You're going to need them in a moment too. Okay. Uh, who else do I need? I need Ananias. You're not going to do much for a while. Micah, you can put my really big shirt on. Okay, you can go stand over there. And, you, and you're, you're in Damascus, so you stand over there. Okay, and then, oh, I'm going to need, not that yet. Okay, we need, I need, I need a Saul. Who wants to be Saul? Me. Okay, perfect. All right. Now, it's a cape. There's nowhere to put your arm. Oh. All right. And I need two of Saul's friends. Yeah, be Saul's friend. Perfect. All right. The other one left I have is a Jesus um, who only has to say things. Who wants to be Jesus? Who wants to be Saul's friend? You want to be Saul's friend? All right, Carissa, you are Jesus. All right. Now, I'm going to take this one for a moment. I don't need it yet. But Carissa, you're going to come over here because you're kind of... Do you want to go and sit over on that seat? Because you're going to say things, but you're not really seen. So you can hang over there. All right, who have we got? You come over here a bit more. Okay. What's that? Oh, yeah, that's going to be his house soon. Is this my house? No, not your house. Okay, perfect. All right, let's tell this story. 
um, of Acts chapter 9. Okay, who did I say was Saul? You? Okay, perfect. Come over here. Okay, and you're Saul's buddies. You're like his friends. You're all like on a mission from, from Saul. You're going to go and destroy some churches. All right. All right, so... Just not, well, not, not too wild, but a little wild's okay. All right, so we get to the start of chapter 9, and we're introduced to Saul. Everything we know about him so far is he's a bad guy. Um, he's set about destroying the church, making sure that Christians, those who say Jesus is God's promised king, are rounded up and put in jail. Um, he's breathing out murderous threats. I'm so glad I gave you this part. Um, <laughs> And nothing has changed from what we've read of Saul so far. Um, So Saul, he goes to the high priest, who's over here a bit further away. Make it a bit of a walk. And you're in Jerusalem, so that's why you've got that. Put those down for now. All right, Saul, uh, you need a microphone. Where was one of the other ones? Oh, there we go. Thanks, Lauren. Perfect. All right, Saul, you're going to talk. You're going to say some stuff after me as we go. All right, wonderful. Okay, so Saul, he goes to the high priest because he wants to get some letters and permission to do what he has been doing in Jerusalem, but go and do it in other places. Um, So he goes to the high priest and says, you're going to repeat after me, Saul, uh, can I have letters? Can I have letters? To go through all Damascus. To go through all Damascus. To go through all Damascus. You don't sound very murderous or threatening. (laughs) But carry on, uh, looking for everyone. Looking for everyone that follows. That follows the way. The way. So the way was a way that one of the ways that early Christians were described. So Saul is saying, "Can I go to Damascus? And when I get there, can I have your authority as the high priest to round up everyone who is saying Jesus is king?" Yes. Oh. <laughs> everyone who says Jesus is God's promised king, who has been raised from the dead. Can I go and round them up? And the high priest also uses the microphone Boop. and says, absolutely. Absolutely. Here you go. All right. Perfect. <laughs> All right. And then Saul exits and don't go too far because it's going to be a long journey. You can't get there quickly. Okay. So right now at this moment, if you're in Damascus, you don't know what is coming, but it is not good. You don't know what's on the way, but it is not good because Saul is on his way. Saul is marching. He has authority. He is coming to round up all of those who trust Jesus. All right. Wait there. Now, so Saul walks really, really, really slowly because this trip is not a quick day trip. Um, This is a long way from Jerusalem to Damascus. It's about 220 kilometers, but there were no cars. They were walking. Um, This would have taken about a week from the moment that Saul leaves Jerusalem to when he hopefully will get to Damascus. So they set off, and then they have to sleep. And then they get up again, and they keep walking. And then another day goes past, and they sleep again, and they get up. And they're going to walk and then go to sleep again. And then they get up again, and then they stop, because you can't get off the stage, because that'll be too close. Um, Now, we don't really know when or how many days into this trip it takes place. But on this particular day, uh, we are told that Saul and his friends, they are close to Damascus. So it isn't the first day they've set out from Jerusalem. They've been sleeping and walking. Saul has been scheming and planning He has had day and day and day thinking about, what will I do when I get there? How many of those Christians will I find? Day after day, Saul is preparing for what he will do when they get there. Uh, But on one particular day, as they're walking along, everything changes for Saul. You see Saul and his buddies, they're walking as they have. And Martin, you can pretend not to be the high priest now. You can have another part. Thank you. No, you're not in Jerusalem anymore. (laughs) All right. As they're walking along, uh, Saul and his friends, a bright light shines closer. Just go over there. Shine it on Saul. Um, And Saul um, falls to the ground. He doesn't have a tent at all. 
Just hold it up in the air. It doesn't even need to be on. Just pretend. We all know what a torch does. So Saul and his friends, they fall to the ground. And as they are there, um, Saul hears someone speak. Hi. Whoa. Whoa. Now, with the microphone, um, Saul hears this. Saul, Saul. Saul, Saul. Why do you persecute me? Why do you persecute me? And so Saul replies, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Hey, you two are on the ground too. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. Oh my and at this point, I think Saul is incredibly confused. He's been walking. He's on his way. <laughs> he's confused, but he recognizes that something incredible is happening. What? That this is not an ordinary thing that he is hearing. <laughs> He calls this voice Lord. I don't think he knows it is Jesus, but this is something of God that is happening because he doesn't know who it is. But then Jesus speaks again, and Jesus says, I am Jesus. I am Jesus. Whom you are persecuting. Who you are persecuting. What? And I can only wonder what Saul thinks at this moment. What? Like as Saul... Lies on the ground, having had this bright light shine. Gosh. How is it for Saul that this Jesus that he is convinced is not God's king, who he is convinced is not raised from the dead, is now speaking to him? Help. Saul's very purpose has been making sure news of this king doesn't get out. But Jesus continues. Now get up. <laughs> Jesus, get up. Not you get up, like say get up. Get up. Thank you. And go into the city. Go into the city. And, I'll, and you'll be told what to do. And you'll be told what not to do and what to do. What to do. All right, <laughs> Damascus. Damascus, you've got to move away a little bit. Away, okay. away, away, you're too close. All right, so the men and Saul, they stand up. And as they get up, Saul puts his mask on. But it's over his eyes, so he can't see. Okay, Saul stands up, but as... As Saul stands up, he looks around and he, is, he has been blinded. Um, his buddies are confused because they, they heard the sound, but they didn't understand what was going on. But Saul listens to the voice that has spoken to him and his friends, they lead him into the city. Now, Saul's blind. You need to lead him a little bit. All right, perfect. <laughs> Gosh! Now, as they... How did you betray me? <laughs> now, as they get to the city, they... I can't see. They go to a place, a house of a man named Judas on Straight Street. No, you can't see. <laughs> um, they go to Judas's house. I can just see a pink wall. Yep, perfect. Um, but Saul... Yeah, so... Oh, yeah, you're Judas's house as well. Help. Here we go. You've... You are no longer all of Damascus. You are just Judas's house. Uh, so they go to Judas's house, and for three days, Saul and his friends they stay there. Saul is blind. He isn't eating. He isn't drinking. Three days and three nights pass, and I can only imagine what is happening in that house for three days and three nights. But they wake up. Everyone else eats. Saul sits there. They go to sleep and they do it again and again. Everyone is wondering, how long will this go on for? Uh, but in Damascus, there is another man, Ananias. What? This is Ananias, who isn't at Judas's house yet, and I've got the signs all wrong. Okay, Ananias, leave, leave the house. Ananias, come over here. Let's pretend you weren't there. I can't see. See, Ananias... I can't see. Yeah, perfect. Ananias, he's heard about this Saul guy. He knows him. His reputation has gone before him. And Ananias knows that when Saul comes to town, it is not good news for those who trust Jesus. So Ananias, um, as Jesus speaks to Ananias, Ananias says things like, I've heard about him. He's done harm. He persecutes God's people. And now he's here for us. Saul has come to town. Uh, yes, but, I have. But Jesus says to Ananias, go, go to this house, go to Judas's house, because there is a man, Saul, 
He is my chosen instrument. He's going to be the one that takes the news of Jesus to the Gentiles, to those who aren't Jewish, to the kings, to the people of Israel. And Ananias, I imagine, is terrified. I am not. Saul, stop talking. Um, (laughs) Ananias is terrified, right? He's walking into the lion's den. Here is the man who murders and arrests and persecutes Christians. And here Jesus has said, go and meet him. This is bad news for Ananias. Ananias is afraid. I imagine he's terrified. But Ananias does what Jesus has said. He leaves his house and goes to Judas's place. Yeah, and imagine how scared. nervous Ananias is as he walk up, walks up to the door. Like he knows what lies beyond. He knows who's there. Hello, I'm what, Saul. <laughs> what will Saul do? Uh, what is Saul going to do when he sees Ananias? But Ananias, can you take the microphone off Saul? Because you actually need it. And also, that'll stop Saul interrupting. Saul. Can Ananias have the microphone? Thank you. All right. Um, Ananias, he walks in and he walks in and places his hands on, uh, on Saul's face. Walk around, Ananias. And he says, Brother Saul. Brother Saul. The Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road? That appeared to you on the road. As you were coming here. As you were coming here. He has sent me. Has sent me. So that you. So that you may see again. So that you may see again. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, That's as soon true. as this happens, what looks like scales they fall off Saul's face. You take the superhero mask off. Perfect. Um, from that moment, Saul can see again. His eyes have been healed, but something far more profound has happened. Saul's whole life has changed. His life is never going to be the same. He has had an encounter with Jesus that has changed everything. The Jesus who he was convinced was dead, was in the tomb, was not God's promised king, has changed his life. Uh, And for Saul, he is now convinced that this Jesus is God's promised king. Now, I don't know what to make of Saul's friends. What happens for them? Like, that's an intriguing thing I would love to know. Like, did Saul's buddies have the same transformation? They were with Saul to arrest arrest Christians. That's what they were just as convinced of it as Saul was. But Saul's life has been transformed now. His life has been changed uh, because he now knows that Jesus is God's promised king and saviour. All right, you guys are done. Give them a bit of a clap. Thank you. Well done. All right. No, no, no. All right, if you've got something, take it off quick. Go grab a seat. Uh, yeah, you can keep the mail. That's fine, but I want the cape back. Thanks. All right, just throw it all there. Perfect. Um, and this passage then ends uh, with Saul doing two things. The first is... He sits and stays with the disciples in Damascus. See, this community that he had been convinced of, he was going to drag them away and throw them in jail. They immediately welcome him in and he spends days sitting with them and learning from them. Uh, He came to put them in prison, but instead they open their arms and welcome in this murderous, persecuting enemy of God's people, Saul, and he spends days with them learning from them, sharing with them, being embraced by them. Uh, Now, I don't think anyone would have seen this coming. No one thought that this is what would happen when Saul arrived at Damascus. This is not how it was going to go. And secondly, Saul's life has changed so much that you remember what it says that he did? At once, he begins to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is God's son. Uh, For Saul, there is nothing he can do now other than share this news that has changed his life. And he first goes to the synagogues, the meeting places of the Jews, and says, I thought that this whole Jesus thing wasn't true, but let me tell you, Jesus is God's king. Jesus is the one that God has promised. Jesus is the one, the saviour of the world. Jesus is the one who has come to save us from our sins. Jesus is the one who is the only hope for eternal life. And so we see in the life of Saul, this remarkable transformation happen. 
this man who is standing on the sidelines as God's people are persecuted, murdered, arrested, thrown in jail, now finds himself front and centre of God's mission to the world. Now, sure, the New Testament is all about Jesus, not actually about Paul and, or Saul. But he is front and centre in what Jesus is going to do. As the news of Jesus goes out into all the world, it will be a persecutor, murderer, whose life was transformed by Jesus that will be at the front of that mission. Uh, and so for us, uh, if you're someone who trusts Jesus, then have the confidence that even Saul when he met Jesus, said, Jesus is God's king. If anyone would have said no, it was Saul. But we can have great confidence um, that Jesus is God's promised king, our sure hope, our confidence for eternity, because Jesus is the only one who can fix the problem of sin. Jesus is the only one that invites us and fixes our relationship with God. And what does Saul do? He shares it with others. He can do nothing else. Um, and that's what I got to see a glimpse of on Thursday, and that's what I want to encourage you to keep doing. What else would you do but share the news of Jesus with others here in Malabar? What would be more important than that? Um, so let me encourage you to continue to give yourself to that task, whether it's telling a friend at school Kids, you have the best moment of the year probably tomorrow morning to tell your friends at school about Jesus because I guarantee someone is going to ask you, what did you do in the holidays? Take that moment to say, I went to a kids club and I got to learn about Jesus. Like that's your moment. Tomorrow morning when you get to school, someone is going to ask you, what did you do? And if they don't ask them, and unless they're really rude, they're going to ask you back and tell them, I got to hear about Jesus. I went to this thing called Jungle Mania Kids Club. It was the best. Uh, so Christians, let me encourage you to share the news of Jesus because there is no other hope for eternity. And if you're not yet convinced by that, uh, what hope do you have? Uh, what confidence do you have about the future? Uh, we see here that as Saul meets Jesus, this transformation that happens. Um, so if you're not sure about Jesus yet, uh, let me encourage you to find out more. Let me encourage you to ask the questions. I'm more than sure that Gav or Lauren or Jason or whoever you're sitting next to would love to talk to you about Jesus. Um, so let me just encourage you that if you are not sure yet, if anyone is too bad for Jesus, it's Saul and he got there. There is hope for you, hope for eternity because of what Jesus has done. And so as we wrap up your week of Kids Club together, God made the world, sin ruined it. Jesus fixed it, and now the news of Jesus is our only hope for eternity. Uh, let me pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you for your son, Jesus, uh, the one who came, who was born, who gave his life for us, who fixed our biggest problem of sin and is our only hope for eternity. Uh, for the life of Saul, so transformed by meeting Jesus, uh, will that encourage us and spur us on to trust Jesus more and more. Uh, Jesus is our only hope. He's our King. He's our Saviour. So would we trust him and follow him and listen to him? Uh, we thank you uh, for your word. I thank you for the week these guys have had at their kids club. Uh, we pray that many people uh, would grow to love and follow Jesus more and more. Amen.